I set out to make the most ridiculous, over-engineered rocket to beat exploration mode in style. Starting from scratch and with the most basic Zerotech parts, the challenge would be to first reach the outer planet Drez and return. If successful, it would earn us some of the highest possible starting profits. To begin, I created the exploration mode save with the highest difficulty being rocket scientist. Our rule for this series will be to ensure that everything we do is over-engineered and ludicrous. Our flag would be the Kraken, symbolizing the major game-breaking issues we're about to face. Then we accepted our very first mission, to launch a rocket. So I began designing our rocket. As the parts were very small, it very quickly caused the park out to climb fast because we needed quite a large rocket to go to Dresden back. I named the rocket Medusa for its amazing effects at freezing my computer. We had over 40 iterations of this build due to it spontaneously exploding and just wobbling non-stop. Sometimes it would wobble to the point where the game's FPS would creep at around 1, one frame per 10 seconds. Eventually, we did come up with a very stable design. Finally, the rocket launched without any problems and flew straight as an arrow. Featuring 85 rocket engines and with a mass of over 905 tons and 800 parts in total, this is quite a large build for a starting rocket. There were many problems encountered. Firstly, perhaps due to the unique upper stage design, the game was unable to calculate the delta V. As a result, a lot of guesswork and testing was required to see if this was even capable of reaching Dresden back. We eventually decoupled the first stage and continued to burn. Shortly thereafter, we achieved orbit. I returned to Mission Control where I submitted our first mission and completed a few other missions that auto completed along the way. Missions at the moment are a little bit frustrating, I'd note, because they only appear if you submit the old ones. So this could easily lead you to missing missions that perhaps could well, earn you a lot of profit from. Now, I'm a little bit outdated as back in the old days, I always used to brute force my way to planets with a lot of fuel and no gravity assist. So continuing the old trend, we burned our way directly to Drez. And I would note, if you were to do gravity assist with this build, you could go anywhere. Now, as far as whether you could return or not is another question. So along the way, there were some fuel transfers required for this particular build, as we don't yet have fuel ducts. So using decouplers and the manual fuel transfers, we made this somewhat efficient. Time flew and we reached Dres. I wasn't too sure where to land exactly as biomes were somewhat spread out. In fact, in KSB2, they're called surface research locations. Dres has a total of five. The plan here would be to go to each location and collect all the possible science. Planning this trip was easy. Landing this thing was hard. Our rocket kept falling over, non-stop. Even in areas that were slightly angled, the rocket would fall down. Once on the ground, it was impossible to get up. Throttling up and trying to do a spinny spin and lift failed <laughs> repeatedly. Oh. I'm pretty sure sometimes this would actually work in KSP1, but I don't know. If we had more SAS, this might have worked maybe. We, we really lacked control. Now, I did have the bright idea of using a Kerbal manpower. Basically, our strong Kerbal tried to lift and nudge the rocket down on an angled hill, but it didn't really work out as well as I expected. And the Kerbal even tried to go Superman and I don't know, directly lift the rocket from underneath, but our bearded frog proved a little bit too weak. So a few more failed landings later, I completely abandoned trying to land on any specific spot. It was basically land wherever possible at this point. And that's exactly what we did. We found some highlands and slowly but surely descended until we finally landed. Though our lander began to tilt which scared me a little, but it actually stayed in position, thankfully. Now it was time to collect the science. During my experiments prior to starting this mission, I found that Eve and Elu both give the highest science returns. 
dress was the second highest and well, it was certainly paying off. But there was a problem. You see, with the amount of fuel remaining, I wasn't confident in being able to return to Kerbin, let alone being able to land on the other research locations. So we just so happened to have a passenger that doesn't eat, sleep or ever get tired. We did the only thing we could do to reach the faraway locations in a safe way, sort of. And we basically ran. We, we didn't stop. We ran for days and days over mountains, cliffs, craters. Throughout day and night, we kept going along the way. We stopped at lowlands, collected science, then reached craters, then the equatorial ridge. And this earned us over 15,000 science. Now, unbeknownst to me at the time, there was one more location that we missed, dubbed the Eye of Drez. But we may come back for it in the future. I was concerned that the Kerbal might fall down a cliff on the return trip and die, but luckily as the gravity was low, the cliffs weren't too bad. Though, if this was Eve or Tyler, Kerbal would have surely died. Many hours went by and we had finally returned to our rocket safe and sound. Our Kerbal did not grow a bigger beard, and he did not look any more tired, but he, he made it in one trip. Now, returning to Kerbin was somewhat simple. I just burnt our fuel in a very inefficient way, because that's all I really know, and we set up a maneuver that led us back to Kerbin's SOI. My aim was to fly through Kerbin's atmosphere at around about 30,000 meters height. Anywhere above that would have been good. And that would allow the air to kind of burn off our velocity without destroying the pod from overheating. Probably. Then this happened. As we flew through Kerbin's atmosphere, I noticed that we were somehow earning science. And I could have sworn that I earned that science on the initial launch. And then I realized that our science for the entire mission was gone. It, it disappeared. <laughs> like, like a doomsday, spending countless nights for this one mission, it was all gone. <laughs> Until, well, thankfully we had a save, and but the issue kept happening. I, I don't know how, but whenever we would decouple the pod, all of the science disappeared. Even the Kerbal, who was meant to contain science himself, just let it out somehow. Now, through some tinkering, I figured out that, well, since the Kerbal has all the science, we could get the Kerbal out, EVA, then from the outside, we could decouple the pod, then put the Kerbal back in, and hopefully, we would have science. And it actually worked out. Passenger held the science and it was all in our pockets once again. Though the pressure wasn't really gone yet, we still had to fly through the atmosphere that could incinerate us. Though surprisingly it was hot, but not too hot. We didn't really get any overheating indicators. And the atmosphere perfectly slowed us down. And it worked out pretty well. But um, we were gonna land on the night side of Kerbin, which I, I never really like. It's harder to see and it's, you know, you kind of want to see where you're going to land. But thankfully our parachute did all the work, so we just landed safely in the ocean. Furthermore, we completed the buoyancy mission thanks to the splashdown. That was one of the missions that were up on display initially on our launch. So yeah, it was a tiny amount of science, but we'll take it. Now then, recovering our vehicle, we went to Mission Control, submitted the buoyancy mission, and boom. Our total science for this one launch with zero tech was 16,943. That is crazy. If we did get one more resource location on Drez, then this would have been probably 20k plus, <laughs> which is crazy. But it's still a really good result. Now, this alone would enable us to complete half of the tech tiers easily. And so, what I did was I decided to prioritize parts that would net us the most science points. Now, there aren't really that many science parts, that being said, but they kind of spread out throughout through the tiers. So I figured that we would just unlock as many as possible 
and we did unlock almost all of them except for two which are in the T4 level and we unlocked pretty much everything in T1 most of T2 was unlocked and a few parts of T3 were unlocked which by the way they were quite expensive uh, but overall I would call this a very very successful first mission I think we're a little bit too overpowered at this point I'm wondering if the next insane mission would complete the remaining tiers but we'll see. So next episode, which planet would you like us to visit? Keep in mind that the best option would be to visit either Elu or Eve and return. Now, I would say probably Elu would be the best value since Jewel is very close and we could potentially visit the planets there as well. Though Eve would certainly be very fun given its ridiculous atmosphere and insane gravity. Either way, it's going to be good and everything will be over-engineered. So let me know which planet you would like me to visit in the next KSP over-engineered video. As usual, check the description for the rocket they were used. Thank you for watching.